So up until this video, we've learned how to factor polynomials, or if we're talking about quadratic equations, we've used the quadratic formula or some other methods there. But sometimes you have to find the zeros or x-intercepts if you can't factor for a longer polynomial, and you have to follow a much lengthier process to do that. So this question says, list the possible rational zeros of the function. So it's saying, list the possible x-intercepts of the function using the rational zero theorem. In order to use this theorem, we're going to start with number one, but in order to use this theorem, you need to list all the factors of the last term and all the factors of the first term. So the factors of the constant, and the constant's the term without an x or a variable on it. So here we have 21. So the factors of 21, and we're not going to worry about the negative sign, the factors of 21 are 1 and 21, 3 and 7. And when we use the rational zero theorem, we also have to include the negative answer. So we're going to put plus minus for each of those. Then we're going to list the factors of the leading term. And the leading term is the term that has the highest degree, or the term that's in front. So here the leading term is x to the fourth, because that, that's the term with the highest exponent. And since that has a coefficient of 1, the only factor of 1 is just 1 times 1. But we once again have to list plus and minus 1. Then, once you do this, once you list the factors of the constant and the factors of the leading term, you're going to use the formula p divided by q where p is the factors of the constant and q is the factors of the leading term. And you have to do this for each possible scenario. So for example, you're going to do positive 1 over 1. You're going to have plus or minus 21 over 1, plus or minus 3 over 1, plus or minus 7 over 1. We're going to simplify this a bit. Since they're divided by 1, we can simplify that to being plus or minus 1. Of course, that's 1 and negative 1. Tw plus or minus 21 over 1, that's 21 and negative 21. Plus or minus 3 over 1, that's 3 and negative 3, and 7 and negative 7. So those are all the possible x-intercepts for this equation, all the possible rational x-intercepts for the equation. And what we mean when we say rational is these are all the possible x-intercepts that aren't some decimal or all the possible x-intercepts that aren't imaginary as well. This gets a little more complicated when the leading coefficient is not 1. Like here it's 2 and this is 30. But once again, we'll list the factors of the constant. Factors of 30. And we'll do plus minus 1, plus minus 30. And, you know, you're just going to have to think of all the factors. There's really no shortcut to this. Plus minus 2 and plus minus 15, that's another factor. Plus minus 3, plus minus 10, and then plus minus 5, plus minus 6. So those are all the factors of 30. And then we do the factors of the leading term. So the factors of the term in front, that's 2. We have plus minus 1 and plus minus 2. So then when we go to combine them, when we go to combine them and we have p over q, number of factors of 30 divided by factors of the leading term, which is 2, we're actually going to have to do everything twice. We have this over this and this over 2. So we have plus minus 1 over 1 and plus minus 1 over 2. Plus minus 30 over 1, plus minus 30 over 2. And I'll just continue to write these. 15 over 2. The thing about this section is it's like pretty time consuming. Um, I'm going to try to make this as painless for you guys as possible by kind of jumping straight to the, to the problem.
And also, we're not going to have that many problems where the leading term is not 1. Like here, I'm showing you one with the leading term as 2. But we're not going to have that many, that many problems like that. Okay, so those are all the possible rational zeros, all the possible x-intercepts. You know, we have like, looks like about like 30 different options here. Then of course, if we simplify, you know, what simplify those down, which you'll have to do for math Excel, um, you would have plus minus one, plus minus one half, plus minus 30, plus minus 30 halves, so 15, plus minus two, plus minus one again. I guess some of these will actually repeat, so we won't, all, we won't actually have that many options. Like some of these will actually repeat. Okay. And once again, the significance of this is these are all the places where the graph might cross the x-axis at a number, at like a whole number or an integer, something that's a rational number, not like a decimal or a square root or something like that. So the reason why we have to, I, told, I just showed you how to do that for six minutes is the question like this, find all real zeros of the function. So um, now that you know how to find the possible zeros, you can use that list to actually come up with what are the real zeros of this function. This is a way to skip like factoring because for something like this you can't factor. So this is this is the only way to skip something like this. So the first thing you have to do is once again list all the you know coefficient the coefficients factors and the leading terms factors. So here we have plus minus one, plus minus eight, plus minus two, plus minus four. I think those are all the factors of eight. And then for x we just have plus minus one. So then combining those, the possible zeros are plus minus 1 over 1, plus minus 8 over 1, plus minus 2 over 1, and plus minus 4 over 1. And then simplifying those, we have plus minus 1, plus minus 8, plus minus 2, plus or minus 4. Those are all the possible rational zeros of the function, but now we need to take those and determine which of those is a real zero of the function. And the way to do this is just guesswork using synthetic division. So we're going to take all of those possible zeros and use synthetic division to try to figure out if they're actually zeros of the function. If they are actual zeros, synthetic division will work out perfectly and you'll have no remainder. If you do have a remainder, then it's not a real zero, you just move on to the next one. So let's start by checking negative 1 and 1. And using synthetic division, you put in the, the coefficients here. Bring down the first one, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, that's positive, or sorry, negative 4 when you add those together, positive 1 times negative 4 is 4, negative 2, negative 1 times negative 2 is 2, and that's 10. So this has a remainder of 10, negative 1 is not going to be a 0 of the function, and we move on and check the next one. All right, so now let's just test one. We've already determined negative one's not a zero. Let's test one. We have to do this again. One, negative three, negative six, and eight. And if you're having problems with synthetic division, go back to the last video. Try that stuff again. Synthetic division is really important for this. So bring down the first one. One times one is one. Add those to get negative two. That's negative two. Those will give negative eight. Negative eight and a remainder of zero. So that means that one is a real zero of the function, the graph will cross the x-axis at one, and when that when you use synthetic division, we're left with this, so we're actually gonna figure out what that is. If the graph started with x cubed, synthetic division tells us that this term is x squared, this one is minus two x, and the last one's minus eight. Then, we need to find the other two zeros of the function by finding the zeros here. An x squared function shouldn't be a problem for us. I mean, we can factor it, we can use the quadratic formula. There are a lot of ways to get to the answer here, but let's just go ahead and factor this since it's an easy one. We have x minus 4, x plus 2. So the other two zeros of the function are 4 and negative 2. 
those are the three places where this graph across the x-axis. And if you notice, this first part where you list all the possible zeros is really important. But when you find one that works, you can actually finish the problem right there. Another thing I wanted to show you is some questions have this form. The polynomial function f of x has the given zero, find the other zeros. So it's already giving you that one of the zeros is negative seven. You can skip all the stuff with listing the possible rational zeros and go straight to synthetic division to find out what you're going to have. So 1, 7, negative 2, negative 14. We can just skip all those first steps with finding the possible rational zeros, go straight to synthetic division. And then know that the remaining equation is x squared. Sorry, x squared. There's no middle term because it's 0, minus 2. Set that equal to 0 and solve. That's x squared is equal to 2. x is equal to plus or minus square root of 2. The other two zeros are plus or minus square root of 2. So if they give you the 0, they save you lots and lots of time.